My research is about the economic consequences of globalization. What I look at is how increased flows of goods, of capital, of labor affect labor markets. So people's wages, their employment, uh, the organization of firms, and how uh, regional economies are organized. So we're living right now through the second great wave of globalization. What's distinct about this moment in time is that countries everywhere are lowering barriers to trade, allowing in foreign investment, and this is having dramatic effects uh, on the way economies are organized. It affects the career prospects for young people. Um, it affects the wages that established workers earn. It affects uh, where you invest your retirement savings. So what I try and do in my research is to help give policymakers guidance in terms of understanding how these changes in the global economy affect the livelihood of people in their uh, cities, in their states, in their countries. He is a top-level researcher in two fairly distinct fields, so both the field of international trade and the field of international migration. I think any junior faculty member in this department, in the economics department, has been drawing on Gordon at some time or another, however busy he gets. He always seems to have a little bit of time to take a look over that paper, give you some feedback on how it should be crafted. Uh, and then I've been fortunate enough to be working with Gordon as well on a series of projects on uh, migration from Latin America to the U.S. and, and other destinations. I've worked closely with Gordon in a variety of different ways, and he's been just a huge feature for this being a good place for me to be as a junior faculty member. Gordon's research has been pivotal in helping to understand at a much deeper level who was going to benefit from NAFTA, what kinds of industries were going to remain centered in the United States and which kinds were going to move to Mexico, what was going to be the effect on Mexican producers of volatility in the United States economically, uh, which types of trade costs feature in terms of driving production to a rich country versus a poor country. So economists have had a lot of simple models of this for a very long time that ended up doing really quite a poor job of predicting in the event what happened under NAFTA. Uh, there's so much change happening in the global economy uh, that increases people's sense of insecurity. It is, increases concerns that countries have about their future. And you've got to have a framework that helps lay out for you how do all of these different channels of connection to the rest of the world uh, matter for how your economy is organized, what prospects individuals in your economy have for your future. What I try and do in my research is to create that framework to give people guidance to think about how these big changes in the global economy will affect their future. There's a tendency in the, in the political dialogue about immigration to portray America as being out of control and that there's this illegal immigration situation that we can do nothing about and that we're, we're somehow being victimized by. Uh, and Gordon has laid out to think about we could set up a variety of different immigration systems that at some quite uh, concrete level we've chosen this one. And so we have illegal immigration as essentially a permanent feature of our current migration environment. And that is a system that has some real benefits for American citizens. It has some real costs for migrants. And I think Gordon has really helped to bring a neutral and objective, uh, clear-headed policy view of this question. What are the costs and what are the benefits of the current system? And then really, what are the alternatives and what could we think about moving to from where we stand now? So one of the things I've done in my research is to try and understand how the globalization of production affects the demand for labor. So by globalization of production, I mean the process through which firms break production apart, uh, locating production of parts and components in one country, assembly in another country, and put all those pieces together and ship them to final consumers. What I've looked at is how that process affects the demand for labor, for skilled labor, for unskilled labor in the United States, in Mexico, and in other countries. One of the findings that, uh, that comes out of that work is that Skilled labor has done pretty well through this process of globalization. Unskilled labor, not so well. And that's important for policymakers in terms of thinking about, well, how do we help the losers from this process of economic change adjust to the new reality that, that globalization brings?